Ladies and gentlemen, tech enthusiasts and honored guests, a warm welcome to the first day of TechFest 2023, Asia's largest science and technology festival hosted by IIT Bombay. Over the coming few days, we will have a plethora of events, tech, uh, exhibitions, and innovations that will display cutting, tech, uh, cutting edge technologies. The coming days will be jam packed with knowledge, hence to an incredible lineup of lectures with notable figures like Shri S. Somnath Sir, Japan's Digital Minister Taro Kuno, Akash Ambani, and many more. While technoholics and robot wars will take you to an exciting voyage, making your nights full of thrill and excitement. I am Ayush Tayal, and I am honored and really excited to welcome you all to this amazing lecture session. Our speaker for today, as the Minister of Defense Scientific Advisor, is spearheading India's domestic development of defense technology and systems. He has contributed uh, to the creation of radar systems, unmanned aerial defense systems, fighter planes, and missiles. In addition, he serves as chairman of Aeronautical Development Agency's governing body, which is responsible for creating the Tejas, a fourth generation light combat aircraft that is now being put into service. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's fill the room with a big round of applause as we, uh, as we warmly welcome to the stage, Dr. G. Satish Reddy. Unable to see, totally dark it is. Why don't we switch on lights for some time and this light is focusing so much and it's completely dark. You all had lunch? Huh? <laughs> oh, and then it's not you, actually I'm asking those boys who are sitting behind. So uh, this uh, actually, all the students are from uh, Mumbai only or uh, various other places who have come here? Very good, very nice. Uh, it's a uh, pleasure to be here. I've, uh, uh, people have been telling me about this event in a big way. A lot of eminent personalities from all over the country and uh, uh, maybe I heard a couple of names uh, from Globe also are coming here and talking to you. Excellent. Uh, I'm also, as I entered, I found that is, the crowd is very enthusiastic and um, also trying to listen to all the talks from various people. That's what I had a feeling. When I said tech first, normally we go to our technical talks also. It is a huge thing and a uh, lot of people who are keep coming, going and they are also chit-chatting among themselves and things like that is the environment I thought. But for me, the surprise is completely in the other directions. Very good. Very nice to see you and very nice to meet you. Now, uh, in the next half an hour or 40 minutes or so, uh, mm, I'll try to just say the defense technology perspective of the country, where the country stands and what all the things uh, country has developed and where we stand with respect to the world and where we are leading the country towards in the defense technologies and systems wise. One is technology, some of these systems. Somehow it's not very comfortable, this lighting. Hmm? Uh, no, actually this one focus light, if it can be switched off, it is very good. You know, it's, okay, leave it, now it is okay, comfortable. You are also comfortable? Very good. Um, so that is what I wanted to say. Let me, meanwhile, by the time they get ready, I'll give you a brief of it. Uh, if after the independence, After the independence, um, the country um, actually started importing a lot of defense equipment and we have been uh, dependent on the outside people only. The country didn't have itself 
any either infrastructure or confidence or anything to do ourselves. I'm using the word confidence also. So there have been some amount of work which has been going on in the science and technology area itself. Uh, I, when I say science and technology, primary I talk about the three departments, uh, uh, space department, atomic energy and uh, defense. Somewhere in 70s, the country thought that we should develop systems. Till that 70s, actually some work has been going on, working on some technologies and some testing and some modeling sort of a thing. So that is where in all the departments, somewhere in the 70s, early 80s, a spurt in activities with respect to the systems has come in. Whether it is the SLV from the ISRO and related uh, RF ATA and other things, or the Pokhran test from the Department of Atomic Energy, or the missile testing somewhere in 78, uh, 79, which took place. These are the activities which started, which got a, a quantum jump in the 80s. The SLV has become ASLV, and then the PSLV thing started. And uh, the atomic energy experiments got more stabilized as per the data taking from the 70s experiment and looking at that more data. And then uh, Dr. Kalam came into DRDO and he brought in the missiles program, IGMDP, Integrated Guided Missiles Development Program, wherein simultaneously five missiles, Agni, Prudvi, Akash, Trishul, Nag, development took place. And uh, testing also started and they have been successful. And then the country never looked back in, in all the departments. I said again, atomic energy, space and uh, uh, defense also. So we tested the uh, Prithvi, we tested the Agni, we tested the Akash and then uh, went on into various missiles. We went down into Brahmos, we went down into Astra, we went down into ballistic missile defense program. The Agni missile, which has been just tested as the experimental model, went into as Agni 1, Agni 2, Agni 3, Agni 4, Agni 5, intercontinental ballistic missiles and so many things. And meanwhile, torpedoes have been developed, radars have been developed and all that. So that Today, we have matured in many technologies and we have become self-reliant in many of the technologies today. In couple of areas, we stand tall. We are one of the first four or five countries in the world who possess these technologies. And we have reversed the gear. We have been the largest importer and now we started exporting also. For your knowledge, last year, we exported more than 16,000 crores worth of defense equipment to the world. And this year, the figure will be much higher. Sorry. The figure will be much higher. Lots of countries are looking towards India, Indian technologies, and uh, inquiries are so many, and will be getting stabilized with those things. And India is poised to become a, one of the large exporters of defense equipment also in the coming years. So that is the state. Uh, from a large or largest, largest or uh, number one or number two, one of those states where you were importing in a big way, the mindset has changed and then you have started towards exporting. There is one more sea change. Uh, anyway, because the presentation is purely technical, let me a little bit explain you. The defense uh, systems were being produced primarily by the DPSUs here in the country. That is the defense public sector units, which are like BDL, HAL, BEL, and uh, sort of things. So now in the last seven, eight years, or five, six years, a lot of private industries have entered into it. Many private industries are now producing missiles, bombs, leaving aside other systems. That is the sea change which has come in. Lots of MSMEs have entered into this. Today, in the country, as a Tier 1 and Tier 2, Tier 1 means is a large system, Tier 2 is more like subsystem sort of a industries. We have close to about 2,000 industries in the country. Close to 2,000 industries which are working as Tier 1 and Tier 2. If we add Tier 3, I'm talking about defense. Uh, we have close to about 17,000 industries which are working in the country as Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. This is the sea change again which has come in. Second, 
there were no startups working in defense at all. For youngsters, defense is a bad subject earlier. Whereas now, lots of youngsters who have entered into um, uh, defense domain. I can say probably more than about three to four thousand startups are working for the defense today. This is one more sea change which has happened. In fact, startup mindset is itself is something different. For all of you, because startups means it is straight away connected to the youngsters. It is, uh, you think startup means youngster has started, more like uh, the idea is, even though other people are also into it. In 2016, this country had about 460 startups, roughly. And today, we are crossing more than one lakh startups, as a total overall startups, more than one lakh in this country today. This is the sea change in the mindset of the people. And if you look at about 10 years back, majority of the students from the premier institutes like IITs who are graduating, majority were the going abroad, probably about 75 to 80 percent. That could be the number. Today it's a reverse. If you take the total IITs, of course now every, there is an IIT in every state, more like about 70 percent of the students of IITs are staying back here. This is one more sea change. Similarly, the mindset with the startups which have come in, the mindset of the country's uh, industry or the startups has brought in a complete change. If you look at 10 years, 15 years, 20 years back, anybody wants to start an industry here, it is a cumbersome process. And second, he used to always look who will buy my item, what he needs. So you were trying to become an ancillary unit for one of those BHEL, Bell, or HAL, or BML, or some of those things. You were trying to become an ancillary unit, trying to make a component or a small subsystem to them. And so first you tie, have a tie-up with them, then buy your land or have a land, build a factory, build the machines, and trying to do it. So you were trying to become just that there is an existing unit, how to make it and supply it, sort of a thing is the majority of the people. I'm talking about 90% of the people. Whereas today, it is no more at all. The startups mindset, many of you must be having startups or many of you are going to have startups, is a globally competitive mindset. Globally competitive mindset. Meaning, the product which is going to come out of me, the world should look at it me and take the product from me. This is the mindset. So, you are technologically, you are trying to see that my product is globally competitive, leaving aside other aspects of price, quality, or whatnot, and all that. This is the mindset which has changed and which is actually going to make the India lead the world. Most important is the mindset. So that is what has come and that is why you are seeing majority of the startups are getting funded by the people from outside the country. Living aside whatever the government is doing and um, funding is happening here. This is another sea change which has come in the country. Similarly, defense R&D uh, with the academic institutes, it used to be some three, four academic institutes in a stray way it used to happen and then Centers of Excellence started in about four or five institutes, IIT Mumbai, IIT Chennai, and uh, IIT Delhi, and uh, one or two other places like uh, uh, Central University of Hyderabad and uh, Bhartiya University. Today, we have 15 centers of excellence across the country. DRDO's centers of excellence are 15 across the country, and there are various institutes in the country are working more than 400 academic institutes are working on the defense projects today and the budget for this is somewhere around 1150 crores for this um, uh, total research. This is never seen. So much of involvement of academic institutes, professors and then there are I think total about 3000 research associates working through this and trying to do it. So the country is evolving itself as a leading technology, defense technology hub, whether it is research institutes or research organizations or the industry and startups. So with this in the background, I just try to give you a picture of what all the technologies developed, what are the technologies being developed and what are the technologies needed for the future which you people can take it up and make the country a leader. So if advanced technologies which have been developed here in the country, the one I put it as hypersonics, 
because this country has done hypersonic tech, uh, technology development vehicle, HSTDV, which has been flight tested for about 24 seconds, air commercial data, air independent propulsion, then SFDR, solid um, fuel ducted ramjet thing. Then we have single crystal blades which are required for engines. Then uh, active electronic scanning array radar for the fighter aircrafts and quantum technology, so the quantum technology communications and that. Advanced sonars for submarines and warships and radomes for uh, various seekers, IR seekers, RF seekers, varieties of devices and all that. These are all some of those advanced technologies which have been developed here in the country. If you look at the HSTDV, this is the flight vehicle which has been flight tested. Um, hypersonic vehicle means is a vehicle which can go at close to about six times the speed of the sound. That is what is called six Mach. And within the atmosphere, at about 30 kilometers altitude, you fly with that speed is what is a hypersonic vehicle. So this as a first demonstration for about 24 seconds, it has been flight tested, hypersonic test demonstration vehicle. And uh, uh, it has given very good results. There is an engine called scramjet in that, which has been uh, successfully flight tested. And uh, so the country is trying to work for the further development of this. Air independent propulsion. Normally a conventional submarine cannot stay underwater for more than 24 hours. But submarines, basically, the strength of a submarine is that how long you can stay underwater without being detected. If you surface, people will be able to see you. So the propulsion technology, what is required for it is something called air independent propulsion, where you don't have to come out and you will be able to stay underwater for more than about 14 days. Um, it is primarily developed here in Mumbai, in uh, Ambarnad, a laboratory called NMRL, Naval Materials Research Laboratory, by developing the fuel cells, they have developed it. And this country with this is either the second or third country in the world which has developed this country, this technology after Germany and probably Korea, which is getting integrated with the submarines. This one, solid fuel ducted ramjet. It is a uh, solid ducted ramjet technology which paves the way for a long range air to air missiles. Uh, Aus is one of the countries which has developed an air to air missile like Astra, which is about 100 kilometers range. This can make your um, air to air missile go to the range of beyond 300 kilometers. So, this is a fundamentally technology which gets into the its uh, air to air missiles and this has been successfully developed here in the country and probably soon it will be flight tested. Single crystal blades. This is again a technology which was not available to the country. The Defense Materials Research Laboratory, a metallurgical re research laboratory has developed these which are being used in the HAL helicopters today and will go into the other aero engines also soon. Quantum communication, many of you must be working here but as a first step, the quantum random generator has been developed and between Prayagraj and Vindhyachal and a dark fiber which is laid by the communications, a hundred kilometers communication as one of the leading countries in the world has been established almost about two years back. And now the world has moved ahead and all that is a separate issue and we are also moving ahead. But India is one of the first few countries have been established a hundred kilometers quantum communication by developing the QRNG and all that. The number of, surprisingly here I want to tell you, the many startups have come up with this very advanced uh, technology. There are at least seven to eight startups which have come up, which are working. And in this also, uh, a startup has played a very active role. A startup, Delhi IIT and DRDO have done together with that experiment between Vindya Chal and Prayagraj in Uttar Pradesh. Radoms. This is one technology which has been evading the country when uh, you have a RF seeker, the radio frequency sh you should be able to transmit through and receive back and but you should have a, uh, you know, a shell to protect you aerodynamically. And uh, this one has been developed here in the country, our present Astra, present Akash, Akash Mark II, Akash NG and many others are flying with this and soon we will have our own radon for the LCA light combat aircraft stages also. AES radar, this is a very important technology. Having a radar on board a fighter aircraft, 
which is active electronic scanning array radar and um, try to have ranges of 130, 140, 150, 160 kilometers ranges with the TR modules which are transmit receive modules developed here in this country, it has been developed. Probably we are again maybe one of the three or four nations in the world who have developed this. It has been successfully flight tested for air to air, air to ground, air to sea modes on the LCA Tejal aircraft which is going to get produced in large numbers primarily firstly for the LCA and later for Su-30 and other aircraft and all that also. Now coming to the missiles, recently some of the missiles which have been developed is uh, uh, <coughs> quick reaction surface to air missile which can actually on the move it can track the targets and launch the missile in 30 seconds time to hit the target. This is one of the uh, rare missiles in the world or maybe one or two nations only have similar class of missiles. The radar is moving, the tracking, the detection radar, the tracking radar and the missiles all moving and you, while moving you can track them and mm, detect them, track them and the missile can be launched very quickly. And then we also have, uh, uh, we have NGRM, next generation anti-radiation missile. That means if a radar is emitting, you detect the signal, using that signal then you go and attack the radar. That is the type of a thing. And uh, then there is uh, a Pralai missile, surface to surface missile has been developed and ULPGM, a very small 7 kg missile which can be on a uh, drone and things like that has been developed by this country. A lot more things have been developed, I don't think we'll be able to get into those uh, sort of a details. Lot of missiles have been developed. Then aircrafts, uh, LC has been flight tested, LC has been ordered, 123 numbers by the Indian Air Force and then that thinking of, you must have seen in the newspapers, 100 more is another thing uh, for the LCA Tejas, a completely indigenous aircraft. LCA Mark II, again, a lot of work is going on. The fifth generation fighter aircraft, advanced and medium combat aircraft is going on. Then Netra, which is a AWC active ele um, electronic warfare system and, um, uh, aircraft is also developed and given it to the Air Force. These are all the various uh, aircrafts which are being uh, developed, which are developed here in the country. And a uh, lot more on the airborne uh, electronic warfare systems, electronic early warning systems, which is being developed here in the country on many more aircrafts is happening on this uh, particular area and a lot of work is going on. And you also know that I did not mention here, many helicopters have been developed, LCH, LUH, ALH, all these helicopters which have been developed by Hindustan Aeronautical Limited also have gone into the services or getting into the services in a large number. Drone, anti-drone system, I can, we can definitely say we are one of the first very few countries, maybe two, three, four countries which have developed this technology, detect a drone and at far off distances, track it and then uh, jam it, kill it, kill with a laser, are multiple technologies this country has developed and which um, developed, tested and the users have gone through it and the users have ordered it and getting into the armed forces is one of the technologies, a miniature radar, miniature electro-optical system, miniature laser, miniature jamming system, so many things which have been incorporated onto this, uh, uh, this one. You can see everything on a small vehicle have been demonstrated put it and then uh, it is getting it in that the services. This is one thing which actually country should be very proud of. You know that we didn't develop a gun, we have imported guns and most of you know that Bofors gun is one which we have imported. So this gun has been developed by us and uh, armed forces have tested it being inducted and uh, last year Independence Day, 15th August, when Honorable Prime Minister was uh, speaking, that time there will be a ceremonial gun firing and this gun has been used in the ceremonial firing and you all must have listened to the Honorable Prime Minister very proudly said, Pichatra saal ke baas is desh mein aaj lal kela mein aam desh mein banaya gun ka awaz suna hai, Pichatra saal ke baad. And that is the type of a thing what he has said. And and the pride of it is, this gun, the range of the shell, what it fires, no other gun has got in the world what the range this can go. No other gun. 
So we have made the gun, which is the first of its kind gun in the world. Uh, now I can very confidently say that the country is self-reliant in the areas of missiles, radars, sonars, torpedoes, electronic warfare systems, AVAC systems, the aircraft, tanks, armor vehicles, sonars, and so many things. That is what is mentioned here that you are self-reliant in these areas, you will be able to develop yourself on this thing. We have become exclusive club, as you say. You can see that uh, it acts, I said, you have developed a gun which has the world's longest range, one of the two or one of the three countries which have uh, developed this and getting it as a submarine. We have done an anti-satellite test in uh, year 2019, knocking our satellites in the lowest orbit. Uh, so we became the fourth nation after uh, Russia, America and China. India is the only country, even today we are the only four countries who have done such an experiment. And we have been very, very, very responsible nation ensuring that debris were minimal and decay the debris, more, all, all the debris have been decayed. And uh, we have also developed a ballistic missile defense, meaning if somebody fires a missile against you, knock off that missile in the mid-air at 70, 80, 120, 150 kilometers is one of our countries. We have developed airborne uh, early warning and control systems, and then we have developed our own tank, uh, our own aircrafts. We have developed our own tanks, Arjun tank. We are only one of the six or seven nations who could develop their own tanks. And then we have also developed our own submarines. So looking at uh, the emerging technologies, what are the technologies which are uh, coming up? So hypersonic weapons, world is talking. You must have seen in the recent wars, people have talked about hypersonic weapons. These are the emerging technologies. Then directed energy weapons, uh, it is the lasers, high, high power electromagnetic, Robotics and autonomous uh, vehicles, autonomous systems are taking a major role. And of course, then materials and additive manufacturing brings in a very important role. So hypersonic vehicles. There are two types of vehicles primarily. Uh, you can call it as a third type also. Either a hypersonic cruise vehicle, which can go to 1,000 kilometers, 2,000 kilometers, 3,000 kilometers, and all that, cruising at an altitude of 30 kilometers, 35 kilometers, going at a speed of about 6 Mach or so is hypersonic cruise vehicle. The basic, why it is hypersonic so important is, first thing is the speed of it is very, very high. Six Mach you are traveling. And you are traveling at a lower altitude. So lower altitude when you are traveling for a radar at a far off ranges, it can't detect it because it can't see it also. By the time it sees and then it uh, says that there is a missile coming, there is no reaction time for anybody else to act. So that is why it is hypersonic missile is important. But the most difficult part is, one is the engine. Second thing is, the materials have to withstand such a high temperature and also the strength of the materials is very important if you have to maneuver the vehicle, move the vehicle this way, this way, the way you want to guide it. And the structural loads which are come onto the vehicles are 25, 30, 40 G type of load comes, so the material has to withstand. So that is the difficulty in the hypersonic. Then the other weapon is hypersonic glide vehicle. You take it to a higher, there is no engine on that. Aerodynamically glide, very difficult because you are traveling such a high speed and then you should be able to control and guide the vehicle. It's a difficult phenomenon. So this is one thing. And uh, coming to directed energy weapons, this is one of the important areas world is working a lot in this. High power lasers talking about 5 kilowatt lasers to 10 kilowatt lasers to 30 kilowatt lasers to 50 kilowatt lasers to 100 kilowatt lasers to 200, 300 kilowatts type of a lasers. Every three months, there is a power enhancement in the lasers which are coming out in the world. So this is one important weapon. And in this, trying to reduce the volume and size and try to make it an airborne laser also. Take it an aircraft. You are flying at about 30,000 feet or so, or 40,000 feet, and then you have crossed the very dense atmosphere, and then you are out of weight, and so the laser attenuation will be much less, and so you will get a higher range. This is one thing where you are trying to miniaturize it in terms of uh, in terms of weight and volume. Second thing is high power electromagnetics. So I sit here, and then I generate a very high magnetic pulse which can knock off a satellite also. When knock off means it is make it 
uh, not functioning. That sort of a thing is one important thing where a lot of people are working in generating very high electromagnetic pulse. And similarly, micro energy and particle beam potential and uh, some of those things are very, very advanced areas which trying to people try to work in this. Then uh, robotics and autonomous systems, multiple areas, right from drones related things to ground vehicles to unmanned tanks, unmanned aircrafts, unmanned helicopters and many things which are being worked on this and a uh, lot of technologies towards it, building the autonomous navigation capability and autonomous guidance capability and autonomous vehicle or weapon launching capability and with lot of AI built into it, artificial intelligence built into it, the work which is going on worldwide, uh, autonomous surface vehicles, autonomous underwater vehicles, these are all the various work worldwide, lot of work is going on in this. And uh, same thing for that, varieties of communication technologies are being developed. Particularly if you are underwater, you have an autonomous underwater vehicle, the communication to it is extremely difficult, you have to depend on sonar, are very low frequency, which is uh, data rates are very slow. Or otherwise, use a satellite and touch the water, uh, which is electromagnetic wave, and then the moment you touch the water, it becomes a sonar wave, and then uh, it goes into it. Once again, the sonar signal comes back. The moment you are out of water, you again become an electromagnetic thing. So such type of lot of work are going on in the communications and related uh, things both RF communication or uh, acoustic communications or other laser based communications. Somebody, Professor Ganguly of this place was talking to me working on green lasers for the underwater communications. These are all the works which are being done in this particular area. AI, as I said, AI is one of the important things. Swarm drones and anti-swarm drones. This is a very, very, very important work which is completely autonomous. It, it cannot be a command based systems. They have to be autonomous, either the drone system or, or anti-drone system, anti, uh, either the swarm drone system or anti-swarm drone system have to be autonomous, which again a lot of work is going on. Lot of advances we can see, both uh, Indian industry, abroad industries, lot of them are trying to work on this. And most importantly, autonomous navigation, not just dependent on the GPS or related things and many other types of uh, navigation techniques are being developed for here so that you cannot be jammed as far as the navigation is concerned. Materials and manufacturing. This is one area what I want to say is a lot of work is going on, a lot of work needs to go in the country. For any country, uh, you youngsters should know, first, if the country has to be self-reliant, it has to be self-reliant in the materials first. Unless you have the materials, you are dependent on somebody, either in the processing technologies, developing many alloys and many processing technologies for the ceramics and all that composites or fiber laser or, or talking about other fibers and fiber and plastic combinations and many of those things, it is extremely difficult for a country to be self reliant Many of the materials have been developed in the country like even for a material which is required for an Agni missile which actually enters back where you encounter a temperature of 3000 degrees temperature and all that or hypersonic related things and all that materials have been developed. As I said, the radomes, ceramic radomes have been developed, but lot more need to be done. Lot more need to be done. High strength, lightweight, high temperature materials and varieties of other materials which are required is the need of the work. Second, for any nation to be self-reliant, the second important is the manufacturing. We should be self-sufficient with advanced manufacturing. Unless you have advanced manufacturing, the cost of the system cannot be low. Unless the cost of the system is low, you can't compete with the world. So that is very, very important. So advanced manufacturing technologies like additive manufacturing and all that where we need to develop is one of the important things. And there is a scope here. Many, majority of the manufacturing sector what uses equipment, that is an important thing. And we need to have that equipment also indigenous here. This is an important thing. So I'm sure that some of you, when you start up, you establish your own startups, you will be working on that, including additive manufacturing equipment. This is one of the important uh, mm, uh, technologies. Space has become the fourth dimension of warfare. 
and cyber has become the fifth dimension of warfare. So lots of people are launching lots of satellites and for lots of purposes and mostly for uh, observations and uh, try to see and all that and uh, maybe here and there experiments are also going on into weaponization and things like that. So space situational awareness is a very, very important thing. You are able to monitor, you are able to identify the satellites at far off distances, at far off altitudes, not just at the low Earth orbit because the space is expanding to from Leo to Mio to Geo, uh, not just the communication satellites in the Geo and various uh, activities, the type of payloads which are coming up. And, and this is one of the important things, space situation, space situation awareness. Then underwater situation awareness. This another important technology or scenario where you need to monitor the situation in the underwater. What type of submarines are there? What type of autonomous underwater vehicles are there? We need to monitor that. And so that is a huge network of technology with sensors and which are autonomous again and autonomously powered and you need to have a continuous power using solar power and other powers or wind power and all that you need to use it and try to make that is one of those things. And um, other, I think uh, I'll get into that wearable technology terahertz probably coming here. So the space wise, lots of technologies, whether it is uh, high resolution uh, imaging technologies, optical, IR, or hyperspectral, or synthetic aperture radars, which actually you need hyperspectral and synthetic aperture for observing many things, including mines and all that is also one of the important things. Lots of people are working on this country. Even youngsters, startups are working on this with a small payloads also of synthetic aperture radar and hyperspectral uh, um, uh, imaging technologies. Country is working in that in a big way. Lots of startups have come. There are more than 500 to 1,000 startups have come up in this space related technology working on this and you know some other people are trying to use develop rockets also launching also like skyroot and through aerospace guard aerospace many people are working on many of those technologies related to that so this is one important area where a lot of things uh, where um, constellation of satellites are required for observing certain things you need to observe a radar you need to have constellation of multiple satellites then only we'll be able to identify and give the position accuracy. So wearable technology, this is one thing which is actually, mostly this is for you. AR, VR, smart glasses, smart soldier, communication, many things and uh, smart clothing and cloth itself has got antennas, transmitters, cloth itself has got all medical um, sensing devices and mostly probably on the medication has got. And sort of a thing is one thing the technology what uses a lot of things are getting into it. Terahertz is one of the important emerging technology like uh, I said quantum earlier, terahertz is also one thing which gives you a stand up scanning and um, you will be able to penetrate through uh, vegetation and all that you will be able to monitor. This is one thing which is emerging. We were discussing in IIT Mumbai also this and uh, we need to develop a lot of technologies. Underwater situation awareness I just mentioned while going through the headings itself, lots of monitoring observation technologies which are required on this for uh, um, the underwater situational awareness. How much is space situation important? That much is the underwater situation awareness also is important. And uh, critically here is underwater communication, which is worldwide is still emerging and need to emerge in these technologies in a big way. Um, asymmetric warfare, this one thing, Number one, the information warfare, then electronic warfare, cyber related, quantum and related biotechnology, bio uh, related warfare. If you look at here, information warfare is playing a very important role today. Generate the information which actually makes the people terrify outside, other side. Make them believe something. And that sort of a thing is one thing which in the recent warfare also, wars also have been seen in big way. Lots of technologies like dick, dick pick uh, generation technologies and all that, lot of apps, lot of modules have been developed, generate the information, uh, collect the information, social media information everywhere and try to create your own information and disseminate the information. 
lots of work is going on and it's a ever emerging work and mostly by youngsters mostly by youngsters this is one then electronic warfare this is again last 30 years it has been going on it is a continuously emerging jamming anti jamming frequency spectrum changing from uh, you know s band to c band to x band to ku band to ka band to p band to terahertz and what not and all that is uh, varieties of things happening in this and it's a continuously changing jamming technologies jamming ground jamming air jamming space jamming space based jamming and uh, what not and all that are a continuously emerging area is in the electronic warfare with multiple frequency bands which are coming up in today cyber warfare this is the fifth dimension of warfare where people need to have first of all protect your systems protect your information this is the first fundamental second then you be offensive trying to do offensive information where you are able to get the information where you are able to see where you are able to do many things that side and from there onwards many other things which are required which is again i say primarily the youngsters to mind primarily the youngsters to mind which actually worldwide or in the country also only youngsters are doing a lot in this and um, actually i wanted to say here what is the strength of india honorable prime minister also says and all of us know strength of india today is the youngsters of this country you have a huge population of youngsters one study says by the year 2028 or 30 40 percent of the workforce in the globe will be indians and that is the type of a skill set which is getting developed and uh, getting so that is where actually i feel the way we have captured the it sector we should be capturing the same way today the emerging technologies of ai cyber the quantum and related technologies we should not the miss, miss the bus and we should shine shine in a big way that means we all youngsters should develop the skill set in this area quantum computing and cryptology this i just mentioned also sometime back lot more uh, 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 startups are coming up a lot of activities every academic institute is taking up nation has taken up government is very seriously focused on it quantum mission has been taken up and a lot of funds and so this is primarily to see that we should not miss the bus not just missing the bus we should be a leader in this we should also emerge as a leader in this is one of the important uh, thing bio warfare is one thing very concerning things worldwide but we need to have a lot of technologies in this first of all a biological detector is one of the most important things you are able to see either stand off detect in the air or what range you are able to detect or very close by you detect multiple technologies multiple things based on the varieties of the um, type of biological threat you have and then you are able to mitigate it is also another important thing which a lot of work is going on in the country lots of laboratories are working and world is also working and that's how we could actually face the covid the country india is one of the very few countries effectively could tackle the covid right from vaccines development to various other devices ppes and what not and all that developing also so future defense systems sorry one is uh, we talk about um, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, we talk about male medium altitude long range vehicles to long range vehicles the stratosphere vehicles which can stay for long and they becoming stealth stealthy they having lots of payloads they having weapon is one of the things second i said lasers is going to play important role i also talked about electromagnetics this is very very important these two are emerging area then talking about hypersonics even talking about a civil aircraft hypersonics then soldier as a system meaning soldier is a soldier having everything the communication the display wrap around display then the weapon automatic weapons and uh, then he has the ar vr then he has other sensor information is a network centric soldier Com- completely is in the network part of it 
he has got the clothing which can have all the sensors and the antennas and what not and all that. From there onwards everything, this is what is called soldier as a system. Next is robotic soldier. There is a robot which is made, which is a soldier. This is one of the work, work again, world, many countries are working on that. Um, cognitive technologies. You see today there are cognitive radars being developed in the world. The radar can say whether it is a Boeing or Air Airbus or it can say it is a LCA, it can say MiG or it can say it is a Jaguar. This sort of a cognitive thing is built into the radars and multiple things are there. So why not we play with the mind also and make the person don't think of a war and think that everything is peace is required in the world and work towards the world which has got peace everywhere, nobody is working towards war. Don't have to develop weapons, don't have to develop ammunition, you be peaceful. So trying to give a message that let us all be peaceful and remaining in a peaceful world is what it is. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. quick questions so that we are already uh, 2.10 now. So anyone, anything wants to say something, talk something? Chaliye, get up. Sir, you mentioned about uh, you know, private sector and telling law and also they are contributing uh, you know, they are having some huge amount of uh, India and the uh, So I just wanted to under, uh, understand you know, the, uh, how is the ecology part external models also surrounded? For example, See, the foreign policy of the country is very, very clear. Where, in what um, conflict zone, what is our stand? Based on our stand, the exports are restricted. And so, the clarity is very clear. Uh, the, the clarity is there with the government of India, completely what to do, what not to do. And so, in a conflict area, if we are not entering, we are not exporting anything to those sort of things, the messages are very clear. I don't think there is any other route or anything being done. When I say we here, now the, how it works, basically I'll tell you, the academic institutes work on the basic and applied research, the R&D organizations, meaning DRDO, does the design, does the applied research, does the translation research, and you come with the prototype and see that the prototype is working, and then the production goes to either BEL or BDL or the private industry today. This is how as a top level system. As for the subsystems are concerned, the subsystems not only come from uh, DRDO, they will come, they are coming from academic institutes, they are coming from MSMEs, and they come from startups also, some of the subsystem technologies. At the system is kind of primarily today it is DRDO where the prototype, first prototype or first one or two prototype come and then industry takes over and does it. And uh, industry today, as I said, it has also moved from DPSUs to uh, private industry also, which is able to produce the systems in a large number also. This is the overall top level system by and large. Some aberrations here and there may be there. Uh, 
ಓಕೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಥೋಡ ಮಾಸ್ಕ್ ನಿಕ್ ಹಾಕಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ there are they have been they have been and there are lot of people who have been joining uh, from primary institutes into the drdo many people mm, if you look at um, um, top people let's say saraswat is from iic avinash chandar iit delhi venugopal and iit chennai so lot of people have been joining um it also depends on Uh, some of the recruitment processes what you have uh, if you are able to go to a institute for a campus recruitment then you can get pick up from there when it is becoming a competing with everyone then the number coming from the premier institutes could be less also but as a top level answer yes they have been joining they are joining and they will be joining and you will have to ensure that they also join it depends on the system actually mostly it will be sea based and some airborne also will be there 